Hey everyone and welcome to this new episode of the Linux and open source news. This week we have Firefox implementing more data collection but don't be afraid it looks kind of fine and you can disable it. We also have more stuff happening around AI which proves that it is an absolute disaster right now. We also have the release of the Linux kernel 6.9 and France starting to ban TikTok in certain territories to quell some protests, which is not great. We also have this excellent segue to our excellent sponsor. This video is sponsored by Squarespace and chances are you all know what Squarespace is, but if you don't, just know that they're your all-in-one solution to create and run your own website. Squarespace has all the tools you need to start your website, improve it, even without knowing anything about code. They have pre-made layouts that you can customize heavily in terms of the colors of block placement just by drag and drop it's really easy to use you can create all your pages but you also have plenty of modules like anything you need to run a store complete with online payment you have a members only area you have a logo creator you can even buy your own domain name that you will need to have a serious website straight from Squarespace. So they are your all-in-one platform to let you create and run that website. So to get started with Squarespace, just click the link in the description or head over to squarespace.com slash the Linux experiment and you'll get 10% off your first website. Okay, so Mozilla announced that Firefox needs more user data to power certain browser features. In Firefox 126, which is the current version of the browser, it will now collect some data on what you have searched for. This data is just broken down into broad categories like health, travel, animals, hobbies and the like. Meaning that they will have a better idea of your interests without knowing the exact specifics. They seem to be using this to power things like Firefox Suggest, which are those little suggestions that you can see in the pop-up that appears when you start typing in the address bar. They're saying that the data is anonymized with Oblivious HTTP. That's a tool that reroutes all the data so they cannot know your own IP address. They cannot link it to your search data. And they're also not linking this data to your Firefox account if you use one. They say they don't collect the specific search terms that you're typing or the websites that you visit, just the broad categories you've searched for. And if you disable usage data in Firefox's settings, you will also disable this data collection. And honestly, this looks sort of okay. I am never a big fan of a tool I'm using implementing more data collection, especially to power a feature that I'm sure no one really uses, like Firefox suggests. If it is to prepare for more features, I would have preferred them to announce these features at the same time as the data collection. But here it is completely anonymous, it is not linked to any personal data and you can turn it off and it is already turned off if you already disabled telemetry in Firefox. So I think it's okay and there's not much to worry about. I would prefer if it wasn't there, but it's not a big deal that it is. KeePass XC users that use Debian testing are in for a rough ride because the maintainer for this package arbitrarily decided to cut some features from the application in the default package, most notably browser integration, which lets you use the passwords you saved in your password manager inside of your web browser, which is, you know, one of the biggest use cases for a password manager. The developer also published a pretty infuriating and patronizing message when asked why this happened, basically saying that a password manager should not interface with anything and that these developments are, I quote, misguided and that users could always install the, I quote, crappy version manually. And that is a very entitled response. A maintainer's job is to distribute software, not to decide how the software works. If the default version of the app comes with these plugins enabled and most users want them, it's not up to the maintainer to decide if it's misguided or crap. It's their job to give users what they need. If they don't like the app or the direction it takes, they can always resign from their position. Especially here, when we're talking about using your passwords in a web browser with an extension, instead of having to open your password manager, unlock it, find the password for the website you're visiting, copying and pasting it like a caveman. 
The rationale behind this is that it's not secure to have these integrations enabled and also that it increases the attack surface. But you know what also increases the attack surface of your system? Using X11, where any app can be a keylogger and you can't do anything about it or having the network enabled, or having a service that lets apps communicate with each other, like copy-pasting, which you need if you disable browser integration. Do you want to remove the score features of a system? Just like uh, using browser integration for a password manager is a core feature of a password manager? It's not up to the maintainer to decide if these core features should exist. If you don't like that Keepass XE has these plugins, you should probably just stop maintaining Keepass XE for Debian. Now, fortunately, you can still install the KeePass XC-Full package to get the normal fully functional version and not use the crappy limited version the maintainer wants you to use. Now, we have had a lot of stuff happening around AI this week and it just paints a pretty bleak picture. First, Google had its annual developer conference, Google I.O., which was mostly focused on AI and in terms of features, it looks useful. Stuff like asking Google to show you how your kid's swimming has progressed. That will generate a slideshow of all the pictures of your kid swimming. Or asking what is your license plate number. Google will now pull all the photos of your own car with the plate clearly visible. In Gmail, Google can sift through your emails and generate summaries for you. And Google Search will also start showing summaries on certain topics instead of the links first, all AI generated, of course. But when you think about it, Google's AI is now able to deduce personal information instead of collecting it when you type it or when you search for things or when you voluntarily contribute it. So they can use your photos, documents, emails and more and just deduce everything they need to know to target you with ads without you even contributing any of this data willingly. And with AI answers now reaching Google search right before you even see any links, it's no longer Bing does that, but it has like 2% market share, so no one gives a crap. It's now billions of people will see the one worldview that Google has trained its AI to regurgitate, and I'm not sure that's something that will benefit society as a whole. Now, still on AI, NetBSD has decided to ban contributions that are using AI-generated code. They updated their commit guide, especially the second paragraph, titled Do not commit tainted code to the repo, which now includes a ban on code generated by large language models or similar technology. And they actually name names like GitHub and Microsoft's Copilot, OpenAI's ChatGPT, or Meta and Facebook's Llama. They say they will presume any AI-generated code is tainted and must not be committed without approval, which is normal as any ruling in any country could force a specific license on this AI-generated code and could force projects to revisit a lot of older commits and remove or rewrite some code. Other projects did that previously, like Gentoo, for example, and I would be surprised if more open source projects didn't adopt a similar stance on AI and just started banning AI code altogether. Now, if you needed even more proof that AI is still a shit show, we also have Slack now scraping consumer data to develop new AI models. This is done by default and it doesn't require any opt-in and all message contents and files typed in or uploaded to Slack can now be used to train their AI model. They say data will not leak between workplaces, but when you look at how easy it is to make things like ChatGPT spit out a verbatim copy of online articles, it probably won't be too hard to force Slack's AI to also spit out exact copies of messages sent by another company. To opt out, you actually have to contact the Slack customer experience team via email. You cannot even do it with a simple toggle in the settings. And we also have OpenAI's team focused on preventing the long risks of AI that has disbanded just one year after it was formed. Team members stated that they disagreed with OpenAI's leadership on the core priorities, 
They also said that the company should be more focused on security, monitoring, safety, and societal impact, and that these concerns are not only not being addressed, but that their team didn't even get access to the computing resources they needed to conduct research on those topics. And finally, if you use Reddit, well, your posts are now used to train OpenAI as well, as Reddit struck a deal with OpenAI to let them use their real-time API. The CEO of OpenAI is actually a Reddit shareholder as well, which probably helped smooth over the deal, and it is no surprise OpenAI would want access to this data in a legal way, because Reddit is basically now better than Google at giving you relevant results for a lot of searches. And it also sort of proves that OpenAI is perfectly aware that they need to pay to actually use content that is publicly available online to train their AI model. So that's probably not gonna help them for their current ongoing cases against major publishers who are requiring the exact same thing. But also, these technologies are insanely useful. They will definitely transform and improve the lives of many, many people. But they do need some safeguards and barriers and some oversight. Letting companies decide how the world will work or how society functions or the core tools that everyone uses has never worked in any period of time for anyone. We need to make sure those things don't go too fast, too far, because if they do, we're all kind of screwed. Now this week, we also saw the release of the Linux kernel 6.9. Headline features include better performance for Intel Core Ultra CPUs, some AMD CPU performance improvements, and also the implementation of AMD P-State Preferred Core, meaning that on your specific AMD CPU, the fastest core that you have will be identified and will be prioritized for heavy workloads to increase performance. Intel CPUs with a hybrid design, so with efficiency and performance cores, should also see better support and performance. The terminal or TTYs should look better when running them on a high resolution display thanks to higher quality fonts, Intel Fastboot was enabled on all platforms, and the new experimental Intel XE driver for modern Intel GPUs has seen some improvements, although it is still not the default for now. And you can add to that the usual improvements to the performance of various file systems, plus more hardware support as always, so it is a pretty solid version that should bring performance improvements for virtually everyone, provided the distro you use gives you an update to 6.9, and since it's not an LTS kernel, chances are if you're not using a rolling release distro, you might not get access to it. It will also only be supported for a few months, uh, so you probably will get those benefits with a later version of the kernel instead. Now, in a pretty totalitarian move, France decided to ban TikTok in New Caledonia, a territory in the Pacific that is still part of France for now. There are some violent clashes and protests going over there, notably because France is planning a constitutional reform for the territory to let more people who aren't native to the territory vote in decisions regarding New Caledonia itself, including a potential referendum to become an independent state. So as protests organize, it looks like TikTok was one of the main tools being used and so France decided to ban it in a move reminiscent of basically every totalitarian regime. Of course, it serves no real purpose because most people there just turn to VPNs to still use the application, with certain services reporting a 150% increase in the number of VPN users there. And in case you were wondering, this is what infringing on free speech looks like. It's not a company deciding to ban you from its own private platform for saying something they don't like. It's not a Discord server run by three people telling you you don't have the right to say something. This is a government telling you that you cannot use this specific application because they don't like what you're saying on it. That's the problem. That's infringing on free speech. And seeing France do that when other countries that have done that in the past don't really have the best track record in terms of human rights or even just democracy in general, that's extremely worrying. And let's finish this with the gaming news. First, we have some news about the new anti-sync driver for Wine and Proton, which promises to bring a lot of performance improvements when gaming on Linux. 
This driver should be included in the kernel 6.10 but unfortunately it's been marked as broken as the driver is not complete enough. Not all the patches required have been merged and it is now too late to include them in 6.10, meaning the driver will not be compiled by default in 6.10 and we will have to wait for the next release to see how much it helps our gaming experience. The developer for the driver, someone working for Codeweavers, the company that contributes most of Wine's code, said that they're sorry for taking too long to get these patches into an acceptable state. And seriously, you don't have to apologize, you're doing awesome work. The fact that it took a little bit longer than you initially thought is really not a problem. We'll wait for 6.11 to get access to this, and it looks like it's going to be a major performance improvement over using regular wine. We will have to compare how it does if you compare it with F-Sync or E-Sync when using Proton, but there should be performance improvements there too. And Wine 9.9 .9 was also released this week, improving support for running 32-bit Windows apps on 64-bit systems and making ARM support smoother and more efficient by better detecting the CPU model. Some obsolete features in Wine's DirectX implementation were also removed, and there are also 38 bug fixes in that release, notably for Crisis 2, for Siberia, Assassin's Creed Syndicate, Unity, and Odyssey, or Fallout 3. And as always, these improvements will at some point make their way into Proton as well, so you will get those benefits when Valve decides to rebase Proton on the latest version of Wine. And how about you decide to rebase your computer experience thanks to our sponsor, Tuxedo Computers. They make laptops, desktops, and small form factor computers running Linux out of the box. They have a big range of devices that should cover every price point and every need, whether you're looking for a basic laptop for office work, all the way up to a giant workstation, gaming tower, or gaming laptop, and everything in between. All the devices have plenty of customization options for the components, but you also can have your own logo laser engraved on the lid of your laptop or your own keyboard layout on your laptop as well. They ship with a selection of popular distros by default, but if you want to use your own, they also have repos for the patches that they've built that haven't been upstreamed yet, so you can make sure that all the hardware is well supported and runs flawlessly. I only use Tuxedo computers these days, I have a Tuxedo Cube for all my gaming needs and an Infinity Book Pro 16 for running this channel and editing all the videos and I couldn't be happier. So if you need a new computer, you want to run Linux on it and you want to support a company that actually supports Linux, you can click the link in the description below and get yourself a computer from Tuxedo. Okay, so thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you know all the usual YouTube pleasantries, the buttons underneath this video, like, subscribe, comment, whatever. And if you really enjoy the channel and you want to support it, there are links in the description as well with some pretty cool advantages for Patreons and YouTube members. So thanks for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.